We are now about a quarter of an hour away from the landing of STS-3, the Space Shuttle Columbia, after a more than three million mile journey, eight days around the Earth in 129 orbits, heading down now into the atmosphere, out of communication because of the pressures of the atmosphere and the heat around the spacecraft, but due to be over the California coast just about now, 15 minutes to landing at White Sands, where the uh, weather was, is excellent, as it was not yesterday, and you see there that it will be crossing some southern states, some southwestern states, before it heads down there. Robert Bazell is at the uh, White Sands Missile Range now, and he has a report for us. Bob? Good morning, John. It's nice to be talking to you again, and good morning, Vance. With me here this morning is uh, Fitzhugh Fulton, who's a NASA test pilot who's been with us on the two prior shuttle landings. Good morning, Fitz. Welcome. Morning. We'll be talking to Fitz quite a bit as after the landing to talk about how it goes. There is some wind here this morning at White Sands. Of course, there's nothing like we had yesterday where all of us who were here ate and breathed a lot of dust. But there is enough wind so that they've had to modify the landing plan a little bit. They'll be making a right turn into the runway that's uh, numbered 17. And they won't be getting a crosswind, which is something they'd hoped for, but uh, for tests for future landings, but that won't be happening. They'll be landing into the wind. The situation here uh, with the cancellation yesterday dampened the crowd somewhat. Yesterday, we had quite a few people who were here. We uh, Thousands and thousands of people crowded from neighboring towns, some from, uh, from both coasts to come to see the, uh, the landing, but they were severely disappointed, and they too breathed and ate a lot of sand. Today, we have a picture of the visitors viewing area and as you can see there are many many fewer people i think a lot of people went through a lot of trouble yesterday they were disappointed they didn't come back today so right now we're looking at winds here at the edge of the runway that are gusting up to about 30 miles an hour sometimes they seem to be steady at about 10 but that's absolutely no problem for the landing uh, everything seems to be going perfectly it's a beautiful day couldn't be nicer and uh, we'll be talking to you later john uh, we've just been eavesdropping. They came out of the communications blackout two minutes early, and uh, Jack Lausma said, this is sure a beautiful flying machine, and they agreed with him at Mission Control. We're just waiting now for uh, more communication from the spacecraft. Yeah, John, they said... That. I think we're booming right over the commander-in-chief's ranch right now, Steve. They just passed over L.A.? Okay. Your energy and ground track are nominal. That means all right. We show them crossing the coastline now. Stand by for a mark at 12. We should see them on television in about eight minutes. No, about five minutes, I suppose. And the, and the landing, as you can see, is only 12 Stand minutes. Stand by. Right. Mark, 12,000 feet per second. They're slowing down uh, rapidly now. Only 12 times the speed of sound, John. Uh, 12 times the speed, that's <laughs> about 7,000 miles an hour. <laughs> Altitude 167,000 feet, range 440 miles. <clears throat> I imagine they can look right up the San Joaquin Valley. They have AOS at White Sands now. It, it's uh, in 12 minutes to touch down. Almost impossible for earthbound people to understand how fast they are still traveling. 10 miles, Mach 10.6. Yeah, it's about 6,000 miles an hour now. And it has no power. It is dropping. Not quite like a stone, but uh, as Tom Wolf said, it has the trajectory of uh, some keys thrown to the ground in a parking lot. The shuttle has uh, probably broken a few glider records. I would think. Uh, gliding from halfway around the world. Uh, undoubtedly, Speedwell is the hottest glider. Roger. Never thought of that. 350 miles to White Sands. Probably temperature-wise, too. Ought we not to listen <laughs> now to see if they're going to change the runway? They're probably not. They would have to do it about now, wouldn't they? <clears throat> That's right. Uh, they would. They have it on some time if they wanted to. But uh, they're at 150,000 feet. They would have to change very, very quickly now if they changed their minds. Passing Phoenix. Passing Phoenix. By the time they got to Phoenix, my watch had hardly made one revolution. <laughs> 
altitude now, 147,000 feet, Mach 8.3, range 290 miles. They are only 300 miles out now, so they should, uh, of course, be getting uh, tack in signals right to update right the navigation. tack in uh, tack in meaning uh, uh, those are the same radio stations that airliners use. We should see them in about three minutes, I think, on television. Stand by. That's Steve Nagel, who is the Capcom. I think you see him right there in your picture. The voice of Mission Control, feet. Jack Riley. You just heard him. Box seven. Range two thirty. Steve has been in the program for uh, about four years now. One of our bright upcoming young astronauts, Air Force officer. So he's probably fairly familiar with White Sands. Their position is now being tracked by the, uh, the Columbia-Houston That's TACAN, and that's the navigational Columbia systems Houston, used by TAC commercial TAC airliners. Range and bearing information. 124,000 feet now. And it sounds like the craft, is, the navigation has just been excellent miles. across the Pacific from the Indian Ocean. Approaching the state line between Arizona and New Mexico. Soon they will be over truth or con consequences mm -hmm. in New Mexico. They're like passing some very uh, desolate country uh, right now. I think uh, with the scattered clouds, they might not see. Uh, the, the landing the field yet, but uh, they will very quickly, John. Mach 5, range 146 miles. Mexico now, about the size of a DC-9, no power. Altitude's 103,000 feet at uh, Mach 4.3, range 112 miles. As Vance Brand points out, and a half minutes to touch down. no vehicle has ever glided that quickly and that far, except the shuttles that preceded it. This is the third shuttle flight. Looks like Tacky on two had a momentary hiccup there and uh, fell out in azimuth. I'll just leave it alone. Copy that, passing uh, 97,000 now, positive seats. John, they just passed uh, 97,000 feet and called positive seats. This means if, if they were ever to have to use ejection seats, seats they, they could not. They could use they're, they're low seats if necessary. They are now below the altitude. Roger. Roger. They're in a very steep glide now, probably uh, uh, less than 100 miles out, over 100,000 feet high. That's three times as high as a, an airliner mm -hmm. flies. Out of 90,000 feet at Mach 3, range 74 miles. Air data looks good on board. Stand by. The vehicle has pitot tubes like an airplane, except they must be kept in. Columbia Houston, take air point, data. So they won't I burn think out. We, uh, I think we've got a picture of it. Columbia <coughs> taking air data now at 81,000. We have a television picture of Columbia on the monitor. Look at that. 79,000 feet, Mach 2.5, range 58 miles. Now Vance, is he banking that? Is he in a big banking turn at the moment? 
Uh, yeah, that's that's right. I believe he's in a right bank, John. When he uh, comes down only two and a half times the speed of sound, he will level out and head straight for the barn. Mm -hmm. And they have just put out their pitot tubes, or, or they're about to. Nav, energy and ground track are all good. Have an update on winds and weather when you're ready. Go ahead. Roger, a high scattered cirrus deck over the field. Surface winds 180 at 11, altimeter 3003. Over. 3003 and roger the wind. 11 mile an hour wind. 11 knots, I guess, huh? Uh, yes, uh, winds are very light. Really, uh, it would be very nice today, I think, for landing. We have a south wind coming okay. up from Mexico.